Well, good morning and welcome to Southside Bible Church. Anyone visiting, we're grateful to have you here with us and to worship our God together in oneness and unity that we found in Jesus Christ. Well, this morning, uh, for reals, we are finishing up 1 Peter. So, yeah, it's been a journey. I can't thank the Lord enough, though, for what He's done in my heart through this epistle of 1 Peter. He's been opening it up, and He's been uh, sowing these glorious truths into it, and I pray that your hearts have been encouraged as well in this book. As we close out, I've been praying that every one of us would walk away from our time in this sweet place that, that Peter is now wishing upon his hearers in conclusion And in verse 14, he closes out, peace be to you all who are in Christ. He's wishing all of us peace, that place that everyone in this world is searching for. Everyone is looking, how do I find peace? They're they're trying everything under the sun to find this ever elusive peace, and that that it would be lasting and not be temporal and move around and change. I just see and hear the pursuit of peace from all walks of life. If I could just get out from under this financial pressure, I could finally have peace. If my kids would just love the Lord and quit fighting all day and night, I could find peace in my home. If my retirement fund could just get to that right number, there would just be peace and we could retire and be done with work. If I just had that right relationship where someone would give me unconditional love, that's the peace that I've been looking for. If I could just get the the breadth of impact that I've always wanted to do in this world, I would finally have peace. Whatever it is, peace is always just around the corner for you. And it's always one change of circumstances away, one alleviation of a squeezing One truth away in the Bible, if I could just figure out this one doctrine, I think I could finally have peace. If I could just hear the right sermon, it would finally bring peace. Just one church away, if I could find the right church, I could get peace. It's within my grasp, if. And so many live inside of that if all of their days on this earth. If I just had that, I could have peace. And I just want you to consider how this letter began. Peter writes to those who have been scattered abroad throughout Turkey, those who are being persecuted and they had to flee their homes and their land, and now they're on the run. And he's writing to them saying, peace, peace be with you. Therefore, peace is not if this then. It it can't be circumstantial. These people are under the persecution, trials, everything that they're facing. It can't be in your circumstances or this church could never have it. But Peter tells us it's in a person. Peace is found in the cornerstone. Peace is found in Christ and he's unchanging. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you find peace in him, it will not change. His work is finished, and it's certain to be culminated in his second coming. And so if your peace will be found in him, it doesn't change. And circumstances can fluctuate, and all these things can come upon you, and there's this refuge that God has given to the people of God to have peace. Peace. Peace is in believing. Peace is in standing in the true grace of God that we looked at the last time in 1 Peter. Peace then is available to everyone who is in Christ Jesus. And truly, this is what I have been laboring for and praying for us. Paul said, I'm a minister for your joy, and I am a minister for your joy, and I want it to come in the peace that comes in Christ Jesus. I want every one of the lambs, the sheep in this flock, to know the peace that Peter is wishing upon the hearers that would read this letter. And so I pray that today, this benediction would be yours. Don't let it be for someone else. Let let it be yours this morning. God is wishing and Peter, through the Spirit, desiring that you would have peace. And too many people live in what we call Christianity and they never find peace. And I'm going to show you what's available to you this morning. And so my prayer is that every believer in Christ Jesus would live in this sphere of the peace 
that has been accomplished and given to us in Christ. Don't leave Peter without it. Don't, don't come out of this epistle without the peace that passes all understanding. And so let's go to our God and ask him to grant that to every believing one in this room. Father, we come, and it is amazing that sinners can draw near to God. We can come near into your presence because you have dealt with our sin. God, you have dealt with everything necessary so that now we can draw near to you in Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, we thank you for the privilege of prayer, and I thank you for the city of refuge, the refuge that we have found in Christ, the place of safety, the place of, of one with you in a peace relationship. God, I desire that for every soul. If, if there's anything that characterizes this world is no peace. God, let us be the city set on a hill. Let us be the lights that have found peace in Christ Jesus and everything going on around us and everything, just wave after wave of confusion and fear that circles this world. God, let these little peace lights go out into this world and let us live into the beauty of what you've secured for us in Christ. And so I'm praying that you would give peace to every believing heart here this morning. And for any unbeliever who's come in to our midst, God, with everything swirling around in their mind and heart, that this morning would be the day of their visitation and they would meet the Prince of Peace and you would give them the peace that does pass all understanding. God, do what no man can do. We pray through your spirit by this word. Amen. Well, this morning we will look in verse 14. Uh, greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace be to you all who are in Christ. This is what's called a benediction. Not a real popular word today, so if I were to ask you maybe what is a benediction, how, how would you answer that? What comes to your mind when you hear benediction? What, what does that mean? And so praise the Lord for what's called expository preaching where you go verse by verse through the scriptures because not many people would choose to preach on this subject. But there, there's a great blessing for, I think, the people of God this morning. That's why we saved a whole sermon for this benediction because I think it's rich and will encourage our hearts. So let me just define a, a benediction before we begin. And I'm gonna take an old covenant benediction. There were three aspects to a benediction. First, it was an authoritative pronouncement of blessing, but it had to come by an, 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 someone who was appointed by God. And so someone appointed by God would have this authoritative pronouncement of blessing. And I'm going to give you an example in Deuteronomy 10.8. At that time, the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi from, from the, the 12 tribes, and they would carry the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and they would stand before the Lord to serve him and to bless in his name until that day, until this day. And so they've been appointed now, the Levites, to give blessing to the people of God. And so they have that authority that's been put upon them to pronounce blessing on the covenantal people. The second thing to a benediction is it was a declarative blessing. It was covenantal blessings that would come upon then the people of God. And now I want to read from you from number 622. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and to his sons saying, thus you shall bless the sons of Israel and you shall say to them, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. So they shall invoke my name on the sons of Israel and then I will bless them. And so they're to now come and impart these covenantal blessings that the Lord's face would shine upon you and he would give you peace. So I, I pray this blessing of peace be upon you. And the third aspect of a benediction was it was, it was a conditional pronouncement awaiting a response to be validated in the experience of the one then who receives the benediction. So the, the blessing would come upon the ones who believe, the, the covenantal ones, the, the covenant keeper. There was a faith and obedience to the covenant, and that's where they would find the blessings of God. And so those who stood in the true grace of God that we saw the last time in Peter that that's where, where the blessing is to be found is 
in standing in the grace of God and, and letting this grace change and transform our lives and to live what we've been learning in Peter. And so that is where this blessing will come upon us is that there's a conditioned a response that I stand in the grace of God. And I want to read to you uh, Luke 10, 2, where I see this. And Jesus was saying to them, the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your ways, and behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no shoes, and greet no one on the way. And whatever house you enter into, say, peace be to this house. And if, here's your condition, if a man of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And so there's a condition upon this peace be upon this house is that there needs to be a man of peace in there, someone who's reconciled and right with God or else it will just return to you. And so there's a, there's a, there's a commitment, there's a condition to these blessings. And so I want you to see then that the biblical foundation of a benediction was it was authoritative. It was appointed by God, someone appointed by God to give it. It was a declarative blessing upon the people of God. You're declaring God's blessing, his face to shine upon you. And then it was conditioned by the recipient in believing and obeying in this covenant that God has given to his people. And so with that foundation of an old covenant benediction, I just want to examine the fullness and the beauty of a new covenant benediction. And it's this, peace be to you all who are in Christ. The benediction now that Peter will close with this authority is upon his readers, I, I want peace. I want peace for you. Everything I've written, everything we've been journeying in Peter, I, I want peace for you. I want that so badly for everyone here this morning. Every commentator I came across as I was wrestling with this, they, they all felt this benediction here of peace had, had its roots stretching into the Old Testament of this very rich word of blessing called shalom. Shalom. Shalom is used 250 times in the Old Testament. Its root and derivatives uh, are many more times used. And so when we hear this blessing that's being pronounced upon us this morning, we can read it quickly and really not pay attention to the richness of what is there for us. In fact, most biblical greetings that we have in the New Testament were what? Grace and peace be to you. And, and a few would just even say, peace be unto you. And so what I want for us this morning and what, what should this mean to us as we read this benediction that, that Peter's pronouncing upon us, what's the fullness and the richness here? And so the first question we have to ask is, what did it mean to Peter? What's Peter thinking as the Spirit leads him to close his letter with this beautiful benediction? Why Peter close this way? Well, let me try to answer that in our time this morning. And so let's start then with this rich word, shalom. And shalom, that Old Testament word, it, it had the idea of wholeness, to, to, to have wholeness, to, to have harmony, to have health and prosperity, to have peace. It was a, a wishing of wellness. I, I've shared before, the word was like you, you labored in a crop and now you've harvested the whole crop and you have it all and they would just say, you have shalom. Everything's good. It was a full harvest. The crop is good. Things are well. There's shalom. So it, it really was the blessing of peace on earth, the, the peace that you'd have prosperity, things would be well, harmony. And when the translators of the Hebrew Old Testament, they, they had to translate it into Greek. It's called the Septuagint. And these 70 scholars, when they came to the word shalom, they, they had to pick a, a Greek word that would translate it. And they, they used a few different words. One of them is the word sozo, which means to save. And it's really the wholeness of salvation, uh, being made right with God in salvation. There, there's this wholeness, this shalom that comes upon us in the gospel. <clears throat> Other times it's used uh, with the word teleos. Teleos means complete or whole or to reach its intended end. And so I wish for, for shalom to come upon you, to, to be complete, to be made whole, and to re reach your intended end for which God created you. 
And other times, we have this word, arene. Arene is the word that Peter chose here in our passage, and it's for shalom. It's a translation of the word peace. And so shalom is completion, it's fulfillment, it's entering into a state of wholeness and unity. It's, it's restored relationship. It's uh, with God and with one another. Uh, it, it, the lowest rung on the ladder of how it was used was 25 times it was just a common greeting that they would use. You would see someone and you would say, shalom. Shalom, God uh, be with you. God with you. God's blessings upon you. I wish you wholeness and prosperity. And it would represent that there's no enmity between the two of you. You, you wouldn't wish shalom on your enemies as you're walking by. There's a, there's a wholeness and a unity that comes in that greeting. But on the highest rung of this ladder, shalom would be the blessings upon you. And for us, where Peter's using this is it finds its fulfillment then in cornerstone. It finds its fulfillment in this promised Messiah who would come called what? The Prince of Peace. And he would bring his covenant blessings. The new covenant is he has done everything necessary to bring us back to God. So in the new covenant, he performs it. He does everything necessary for our salvation. And I I pray for the shalom, the finished, the completion, the peace to come upon you and all the fullness of covenant blessing in Jesus Christ. So peace was the capstone of new covenant blessing. You you get everything in Christ. You get peace with God, peace in your own heart, and peace with other people. And so here's the fullness of what we have as the people of God. You have peace. Peace be upon you. Peace is it. Uh, I want to read you a few verses that I think will flush out the beauty of this word. Listen to Luke 1, 76. We're going to celebrate Christmas here this morning. Mary's pregnant with Jesus, and here's this prophecy, and you, child, this one, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord, John, to prepare his ways, to give to his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins, and because of the tender mercy of our God, with which the sunrise from on high shall visit us, Jesus to shine upon those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Savior will come, He will shine, and He will lead us into the way of peace. He will bring shalom and all of its fullness to the people of God. In Luke 2.13, after Jesus is born and the angels now appear to the shepherds, And suddenly there there appeared with an angel a multitude of the 20 hosts praising God uh, and saying, you know, peace uh, that has come upon earth and goodwill toward men. In Acts 10, Peter said this, opening his mouth, I most certainly now understand that God is not one to show partiality, but in every nation the man who fears him and does what is right, there's that condition, is welcome to him. The word which he sent to the sons of Israel, preaching, this is Jesus, peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Peace was his message through himself, through his work, through his person. I've come to bring peace. And I'll give you one last one in Ephesians 2.13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off Gentiles have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall by abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace. And so this is so beautiful now. At the end of this letter, Peter pronounces upon these battered believers. What they were going through, it's almost impossible for us to pull up. And he looks at them and he writes at the very end of all the truth that he revealed in Christ, peace be upon you. All the richness and the fullness of shalom from the Old Testament imported in, peace is now pointing to all these readers, wholeness, rightness, relationship that has been procured in the person and the work of Jesus Christ, our Prince of Peace. And this just blows me away that 
all the persecutions that they were facing and the fiery ordeals that are coming upon them and bosses and governments and husbands are mistreating them. They're being scorned and mocked and reviled. And just, it just feels like everything's falling apart. And Peter's saying, peace be upon you. I leave you with the peace of God in Christ Jesus. All of the significance of the new covenant of the life and the death and the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ and the gift of the Holy Spirit is peace. I I give you peace. And so guys, it's not around the corner. I want you to hear that. If you're sitting here and all your peace is based upon what needs to happen or what needs to come or what needs to get out of your life, you'll never find it. This is for the new covenant people of God. It's not circumstantial. It's a person and a relationship with this person. Peace. And I get the privilege of shepherding saints who have been assaulted with every kind of trial you could imagine. And what I'm seeing in every one of them is a peace that I just can't figure out. It surpasses understanding. And it's in Christos, as we will see in a minute. Peace to you is God's commitment to give you all manner of good and true prosperity in him. Shalom was temporal and earthly. Eranos is all that we have in Christ is eternal. And it's poured out by the Holy Spirit in our hearts, mediating the presence of Christ to our hearts and hope and giving us peace. The beauty of this benediction is is that this is the place that Christ has secured for you. He died and he secured this for you. And he's saying, peace, in the midst of everything, I've given you the refuge. I've given you the, the ark that we saw. I'll flee to it. There's, there's peace. And as I thought on this, I was kind of brought back to the last benediction that Jesus gave to his apostles in Luke 24. He led them out as far as Bethany. He lifted up his hands and he blessed them. He gave them a benediction. And it came about that while he was blessing them, he just parted from them. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and they were continually in the temple praising God for all the new covenant blessings that have now come in Christ. I'm brought back to what Jesus said to them, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you, new covenant children of God, the peace of Christ given to you, the finished work of Christ, a living hope, that peace I leave with you, the peace of being right with God. There's no fear. He's your father. Everything is taken care of, past, present, and future. He's done everything to give you peace. And he wants you to to enter in. As I'm done writing this letter, it's not that you fill up your notebooks and you're smarter. Please leave with the peace of God and new covenant blessing. Oh, for the people of God. This is where Peter has led us. This is his takeaway from this letter. It's authoritative, it's declarative, and it's conditional on what? It's conditional that we stand in the true grace of God. We learn from this letter and we stand in these truths bedrock. That's where your peace is going to be in believing and holding these truths and living the way that we've learned in these epistles. We believe this gospel and it brings about the obedience of faith. And those who I just see walking in this reality that they have this communion with Christ and they just have a peace that's just not bound by circumstances. I have this sweet sister-in-law who said her whole life she feared a stroke and God brought a major one upon her. And now I had lunch with her this week, and it, it took her 15, 15 minutes to get out of her wheelchair to walk into the place to come eat, and she can't use her hand to cut her food. And what went on for an hour and a half was just peace. Like, I don't fear anything anymore. My greatest fear, I went into it, and Jesus Christ was there. I'm not afraid of anything. And all, like, I was just jealous of her by the end of lunch. God, give me a stroke. (laughs) Look at what this woman has. 
And all of us, our fears, we're terrified and we run and we hide. And then all of a sudden you enter into your fears and Jesus is there. And he brings peace. And all of a sudden, what do I got to be afraid of? And that's what he's saying. I have that for you. Everyone this morning, every fear you're facing, every struggle, everything, I've got peace for you. Come enter into Christ. And there's peace. It's all been taken care of. It's all dealt with. You're safe. Come have the peace of God in Christ Jesus. Stand in the true grace of God and you stand in peace. And this is what Jesus gives to us. And this will cause the world to ask, what is the hope within you? You will not make sense. Receive the true grace of God and the roars of the lion and the floods of persecution cannot overcome the calm of the fulfillment of shalom and the peace in your heart in Christ Jesus. Amen? Do you see the fullness of this blessing? What the world is chasing and trying to find on a daily basis, they'll they'll write things like visualize world peace. It's not working. It's circumstantial. And when they get it, it goes away and it's always changing. And what what I offer to you in the gospel this morning is a peace that does not go away because it's in the one who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So here it is, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Peace be upon your head. Believe these truths and enter into the peace that God has given and you will be a bright light in the world where there's no peace. And so receive what God has for you from this letter of First Peter. And what I want to do is I want to close out with one last thought, is who is this peace given to? Who, who gets this peace? Well, he tells us very clearly, peace be to you all who are in Christ. This peace is very specific by one prepositional phrase. It is for those who are in Christos, for those who are in Christ. It's true believers. This is probably the most significant prepositional phrase in the whole Bible. Paul uses it some 160 times. In Christos, in Christ. This blessing is only for those who are in Christ. It's not for those outside of Christ. It's for those who are in him. Paul saw this as the key to every new covenant blessing to get shalom And all of this peace and blessing that comes, it comes in the person of Jesus Christ. God doesn't just say, here are the blessings, here you go, put your hand out, I'll give you blessings. Come on, come up here like Santa Claus, and I'll just keep handing them out. That is not it. They come from being joined to Jesus Christ, your representative head. They come from being uh, made one with Christ, one with him. He becomes the fountain of every blessing. We sing about it. In Christ now is where I receive every spiritual blessing. And the Bible says it's so intimate that it's like a vine and a branch. And that a, a branch receives all of its sustenance and life and everything through the vine. Branches don't bear fruit. Vines do. And vines, it's everything now. All my life, all my sustenance is now found in Christ. It's like a husband and a wife. The the oneness that comes when, when there were two in the garden, now he makes one. And in the same way, you are one with Jesus Christ. It's like a shepherd and a sheep. It's like a head to its body. It's like a cornerstone to its building. The way the blessing of the new covenant is conveyed to us is by His Spirit dwelling in us, mediating the presence of Jesus Christ to us. You're joined to Him, you're married to Him, and there's a oneness that no English word can capture the depth of the oneness that we have with Jesus Christ. Anyone who is in Christ Jesus has peace. Peace with God. And you do get peace in your own heart. And you now have peace with other people instead of being just a brawler and a fighter. Oh, the peace of Christ. 
all that he is and all that he did for us were joined to him. It's ours. And God views us now as if we are in Christ. And that is why we are infinitely loved and protected and cared for. Aren't you glad that his love and his protection and his care is not based on you, your merit, your performance, how good you are or how bad you are? It is based on Jesus Christ. I am in Christ and God loves me and cares for me and nurtures me now because I am in Christos. He loves me the same way and to the same degree that he loves his own son because I'm in Christ. That should bring everyone to their faces right now if we could comprehend just a little bit of that. In Christ is peace upon peace. Do you realize what you have in Christ? Shalom. So hear me, because it needs to be said then, and I'll close. On the opposite side of this statement is what? If you're not in Christ, you have no blessing. You have no benediction this morning. There is no peace. There is no peace. And it ends in an eternity without peace, but rather enmity and the wrath of God for all of eternity. In Adam, there's no benediction. This is children's bread this morning. This is only for those who are in Christ. And what a shame to go all the way through Peter and finish without the peace of God in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Why walk away from Peter with nothing? Why walk away when he's been showing you how to be joined to the vine? how to find a cornerstone and to be brought into Christ. I'm just amazed how many are content with getting close to Jesus Christ. We get as close to him as we join a church. We, we get as close as to saying, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna love my neighbor as myself. I get as close to learning the doctrines of the Bible. I get as close to living in community in a church but I never come to him. Those things just keep me at a distance. I'm in the stratosphere of Christianity, but I never get to Jesus Christ. And that's my passion. There's not one soul in here that stops short of Christ with all the external trimmings of Christianity. Don't stop short. There's a savior saying, come to me all the way. Don't stop at morality and religion. Come and I'll give you rest for your souls. I'll give you shalom. I'll give you peace that passes understanding. Come all the way. Don't stop short and live in guilt and shame and no peace and guilt because the law is upon you and you can't keep it all and you're a hypocrite. Why stop short of Jesus Christ? Come all the way. He wants you to. He bids you to. Come without cost, without merit, without cleaning up. Come to Jesus Christ and find every spiritual blessing in the arenos, the peace of God over you. To play religion, you will never find the benediction of peace. And I want you to have peace. I'm tired of watching people in the church that have never come all the way without peace. Come all the way. I beg you this morning. Do you realize what's offered to you in Jesus Christ? Oh, the sweetness. So my question as we close then is how do we get into Christ? I want it, don't you? How do I get in Christ? I want to be in Christos. If that's my only hope, if that's where I get peace, I want to be there. How do I get there? I want you to hear it. It's not by being emotional. Just weeping and crying doesn't get you into Christ. Gaining a bunch of knowledge does not get you into Christ. Walking an aisle does not get you into Christ. Raising a hand does not get you in Christos. Singing kumbaya and throwing a twig in the fire does not get you into Christos. Being baptized or joining a church does not get you in Christos. It's not by being born into a good family. But it is by faith and by faith alone, but not by a faith that is alone. It will have said accompany it. The only way in Christos is by faith that looks away from anything in your own hands, your own merit, 
And it looks only to Jesus Christ to save a sinner such as me. And the one who will look to him in that way will come all the way into the surface. You will get all the way into Christ Jesus. The, the entrance, he's paid it. And all he's saying is, I want you to do nothing to enter into this salvation. It's finished. Come to Christ. Believe what we learned in Peter. The beautiful gospel in those first 12 verses. That's how you get into the peace that he's offering to you this morning. Man is to believe. And God then by his Holy Spirit joins you to the Lord Jesus Christ in one spirit. And his spirit indwells you and he will mediate the presence of Jesus Christ to you. This is the true grace of God. Stand in it. Amen? Don't settle. Stand in it. This is what's real. Get in it. and Make sure that you have it. Don't die with religion and not being in Christos. Young children, I love you. Don't be satisfied with just doing the external things. You get into Christos by faith and believing and loving this Christ. And when I get this, peace. Peace. That's maybe one last thought. I keep saying that, sorry. Oh, uh, don't encourage a guy like me. It's very exclusive. It's very exclusive. It's only to those who are in Christ Jesus. Very exclusive. But there's one last thing I want you to close with. It's very inclusive. It's very inclusive. There's one last word I want you to look at in verse 14. Peace be to who? You all. And this is one part I really appreciate the South. They get this. Because we'll just say you, and it could be singular or plural. But they do such a good job of saying y'all. So this is for y'all. It's for you all, for anyone then, who is in Christ Jesus. So he's saying, I don't care if you're blue collar or white collar. I really don't care if you're educated or uneducated, uh, white, black, blue, green, yellow, whatever, religious or irreligious, whatever your background here, this, whatever the sins you're battling, I want you to see this. Peter said there's some babes in this church and you're spiritual newborns, and you're thirsting for the Word of God that you might grow up into salvation. So you're like a little newborn spiritual baby, and you're not accomplishing much with your life. You just cry once in a while and eat. And some, you're struggling with old patterns. And Peter said, time's already sufficient for you to carry out the lust of the flesh. Why are you going back to what you were in Adam? It didn't satisfy you. It didn't give you hope. Why are you still going back to that? So there were some people in the church that were still running back to what they were in Adam at times. Some were struggling to respond rightly to abuse from the world. Some wives were struggling to live with these unjust husbands. And bosses were mistreating you just because you were a Christian. And they're reviling back. So he says, quit reviling. Some were getting mistreated because they were obnoxious, he said. You're, you're suffering because you're obnoxious. Some of you could wear that. Guys, this bunch and Peter, they were struggling. They weren't perfect saints. You got to hear that. Wherever you are then this morning in your knowledge or your maturity, there is no difference. By faith, you are in Christ. You're, you're brought in and everything about him now is yours. And there are no second class citizens in the kingdom of God. I love that. There's not a second blessing to those who are really zealous in the faith. And you know what that means then, struggling Christian, who maybe you're right now in the fire and you're not seeing it as purifying, and you're just struggling right now in the fire, and you're tired and you're dry and you're, you're weary. I want you to know this morning that God's benediction is upon you. It's not your perfection that gets this benediction. Peace to you all who are in Christ Jesus. Oh, what a blessing. That should be water to your soul this morning. Not peace to the ones who are just killing it in Christianity. <laughs> peace to everyone who's come to Christ in faith. It's not my maturity or how perfect I am or how much I prayed and read this last week. 
God's peace is upon me. I have shalom and I have arenas. I have the fullness of peace in Christ Jesus. Isn't that the best news you've ever heard? Come on, amen. Amen. Yeah. So in closing, I ask myself this question. Can I give a benediction to Southside? Because Aaron and the Levites could. The 70 that Jesus sent out, he said you could. And the apostles could. But can a pastor raise his hand and pronounce a blessing upon his congregation and have God's authority? Um, I just, I never got an answer. Somebody got one? I don't know. We can? Okay. So uh, here's, here's my conclusion. I'm not real sure. So may God's peace be upon every one of you here this morning. But no matter what, I want you to hear God's benediction over you this morning. And this touched me so deeply this week. We live under the raised hand of Jesus Christ. He is our high priest. And he has obtained peace for us. And we are in Christ. And he lifts up his nail-pierced hands for us. And he pronounces, my peace I give to you and my peace I leave unto you. And so there is a blessing of peace from the Lord Jesus Christ upon everyone who's in Christ Jesus this morning. I I pray that for every one of you. We sit under that blessing this morning of peace. Stand in the true grace of God and it brings peace upon peace and it gives birth to eternal peace forever and ever. And, And where every day is gonna be better than the last and then I was studying Second Peter for our next book, and, and he says something really interesting. He says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So grace and peace can be multiplied. And, and so we're gonna learn how to multiply this grace that we stand in and this peace that we have in Christ. And so it can be, it can be multiplied. You can grow in it and you can deepen in it. And so if you're even struggling in your peace, there's a, there's a way to keep growing and deepening in peace, and we will look at that in Second Peter. And so, guys, this is Peter, and I pray that as we close, um, that God has deepened your peace, and I, I desire that every one of you would have this sweet blessing. So that's a year and nine months. I'm tired. It was good. He met me, and I will keep praying this for myself and for all of you. Let's let's pray. Father, I come before you and I thank you for this word that you inspired. Lord, it's so beautiful to have an inerrant word of God that has no errors and just full of truth. And we thank you that you've given us this season together as a body, as a local assembly. And Lord, we've been able to open it up and look at the glories and the beauties that are in it. And we've, we've scratched the surface, but what we've scratched has been altogether lovely. It's been beautiful to look at our cornerstone And so, God, I can't thank you enough for the way you've met us. I thank you for the testimonies of what you've done in lives during this book. I thank you for the way you've met my own heart. God, I pray now that as we close, that you would multiply peace upon every heart in this room. I pray for the benediction of their hearts. I pray for every one of them right now to no matter what they're sitting and no matter what circumstance, let them lift their eyes to the risen one seated in victory at the right hand of God, the one that they are in right now, Christos. God, let them see that in all the fullness and let the blessing and peace of almighty God flow to them like a mighty river. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.